Welcome, Kate. I am so excited to have you here on the podcast today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to chat. Yeah. And you have something really big that's happened. And I want to make sure we talk about it today. You have a brand new book that's out this week. It's already out, actually, isn't it? Yes, my book, um, Soul Story, How to Tell Stories That Call in Your Soul Tribe. It came mm-hmm. out yesterday, actually. Oh. So um, yeah, so it's it's a bit of a crazy week, but um, it's it's great when you put so much you know, you need to um, put as much time and effort into talking about it because I think we it's very <laughs> tempting not to. <laughs> but Absolutely. we do, we have to honestly do. So, yes, yeah, so we're having lots of fun chatting all about, you know, storytelling Ooh. and story and, uh, you know, connecting with your, with your stories and using them mm-hmm. to connect with your audience. So, yeah. Yeah, so I know that one thing that often comes up right now is that we have to connect more with our audience. We have to learn how to and be really authentic in the connection and it not just be kind of surface level anymore that people, especially I think after COVID are looking for that genuine piece of content that whether it's a book, a blog, a post on social media or an email that really pulls you in. And I'm just wondering kind of what you think about that right now. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, whenever social media and content marketing started becoming much bigger and and people were able to market themselves, I think, you know, we started out and we were just doing the kind of very um, kind of one size fits all, you know, like Mm -hmm. do this post and X, Y, Z. And we were, you know, we were showing up and we were serving and we were giving value and information. Uh, and that was, you know, okay, because it, it kind of, it was kind of a novelty, you know. Yeah. And now, in recent years, it is such a busy, noisy space to be in, mm-hmm. and there are so many people who do the work that you do. I mean, obviously, we're all unique, and and the way that we deliver it, but there are so many people who deliver the same information and and the same similar messages, and so we need to find ways that are going to create that connection, create that dialogue yes. between us and our audience and and actually you've got the perfect tool and it's you it's it's you your personality your worldview your your past experiences um your stories which is what my book is all about Mm -hmm. you know that's what creates the the connection the dialogue which makes people feel and realize that actually you understand them and you see them and Mm -hmm. actually you're the person that they want to work with because they feel comfortable with you and they feel like Mm -hmm. You know, I, th- yes. I often talk about, you know, they, they, they're, you know, they're friends that you haven't met yet. That's a, a, a line mm. that I got off um, Leonie Dawson, who you might be familiar with. And she said that. And I thought, yes, that's exactly what we're doing when we are creating connection online. We're, you know, creating relationships, real relationships. It may, they may be virtual, but they are real relationships. Yeah. And that's what makes, you know, that decision. Like, who do I go with, with this problem, with this, mm-hmm. this, this uh, gap I have? And you become the obvious choice because you're the someone that they resonate with. Oh, so you're looking to get create that resonating feeling. But how does that work? So let me give you an example. I'm private with my family's life. We don't put that stuff on social media. We don't put it out in our emails or anything with my business. How do you create that kind of connection, create that kind of community if you don't share, say, your kiddos' lives mm-hmm. on on the yeah. internet because yeah that yeah, seems like so so much of a big part of that connection is oh here's what my child is doing or this is the picture of where we went on vacation and we're here right now but I don't want you to know that yeah oh, I, I totally feel that I'm the same I don't like really sharing I try to keep that in my kind of friends list only mm-hmm. and stuff um but and and as mothers it's such a massive part of our life so it feels mm-hmm. like a huge omission um however there are so you just have to be more creative there are other ways that you can let people in and create connection. And okay, maybe I mean I'm a I'm a I'm a mum myself, and so it it's like it's kind of like the other half of my well, very large chunk of who I am. In fact, <laughs> um, but you know there are so many other different aspects that you can let people in, and you know there are so many other stories that you can share mm. about your everyday experience and and life that doesn't involve those areas. So it mm-hmm. could be just kind of I, I I think I always think a good example of this is um. 
like Gabby Bernstein, um, you know, I, I, I don't know how, how much she shares and how much she doesn't share, but I always remember that one of the things that she did, or at least used to do, she used to do a, a cooking with Gabby um, oh. on YouTube. And she used to do, I don't know if she still does it now, but she used to just kind of go live on, on YouTube, I think it was. And she used to kind of like stand and cook her dinner and just chat to the camera and just do a live. And it was like that, look, I'm a real person. I'm doing one of these mm -hmm. things that you do all the time. We all cook, you know, you know, if you're a mum, you're cooking mm -hmm. several meals a day and preparing food all the time and just chatting about life and, and letting people into your worldview and, and showing that you, you don't just talk about your thing, you know, like those, mm -hmm. you know, those content pillars that we all talk about, you know, yes. I talk about this, 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 and this, but you have to show up as a rounded 360 degree person. And, yeah, and there are other things that you can talk about that don't include your your children you know you have in other interests you have you know how do you stay fit how do you still stay healthy you know what routines and habits do you have mm -hmm. that your um, audience are going to think yeah actually that's that's helpful to me it doesn't necessarily directly link to what I'm getting from you as a professional but there mm -hmm. are other things that you as a um as you know as a as a woman that have Mm -hmm. opinions and views and thoughts and, and good advice and wisdom on that you can share and let them in with um and then stories you know other stories are another great way of doing that everyday moment storytelling and mm -hmm. you know other stories way back from your past I often tell stories mm -hmm. from my childhood and, and things like that which let them in but I'm protecting other parts of my life you know that don't need yeah. to be you know used <laughs> as a marketing <laughs> Right, right. Because I know when I talk with some of my clients, they, they say, even say to me, I don't want my kids to be my marketing tool. They're my kids. That doesn't feel good. And so I love your perspective of just kind of even telling stories from your childhood. It doesn't have to be what's happening at this exact moment on this exact day. It can be things you've experienced that have shaped who you are exactly. and sharing those moments too. Yeah. And we all have, I mean, we have hundreds of things I mean our mm -hmm. lives I think we often think we think about our story as entrepreneurs you know we start off and we think about our founding story like how did we start a business or mm -hmm. why do we do what we do and yeah that's a story that we do need to share but it's probably not the most compelling story <laughs> that we have you know mm -hmm. and we have you know our lives are many 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 stories all you know, t wrapped up into one. And mm -hmm. you've got lots of different story threads, which can be used to share different messages and, mm -hmm. and ideas. And so the trick is just thinking, you know, what is the message I want to share? When was the first time I learned this? And, mm -hmm. you know, then you might tell a story of, you know, whenever you were at school and you had a problem in a friendship group or with a teacher and you might find that that's the, that's when I first learned that lesson and this is the mm -hmm. lesson I'm trying to share so I'm going to share that story it's and that lets them in it mm -hmm. helps them see you're a person who's had similar experiences to they have we've all been to school we've all fallen out <laughs> with friends we've all um, had that terrifying teacher you know yes. there are these universal experiences that we all have and you can dip into them and, and use them to show actually I, I'm like you and you know I'm, I'm a real person I'm not just this expert hiding behind you know my expertise yes okay so if the goal is to be human I think we can probably agree that is the goal to be human where <laughs> does AI fall in all of this because there's so much hype right now go do your content on AI go to chat GPT put in your idea let it write a post for you and then there's Google coming back and saying, well, we really want high quality content. I don't care who wrote it, but it has to be high quality. It's got to be that human. It's got to have the emotion, the empathy, and really the connection. But maybe I'm using it wrong. It doesn't come out that way when I put stuff in, no, even if it's right. a high quality prompt. It doesn't. It doesn't. And and I, uh, you know, te I, I'm someone, I, I do like tech. I mean, it's enabled me to have a fantastic business and 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 do some incredible things I couldn't have done even 10 years ago. I couldn't have mm -hmm. the business that I have now. Yeah. Um, but I do think there's a tipping point where suddenly technology stops being useful and starts taking things away. Yeah. And, and as you say, it takes that human side away. And I um, thought about this a lot because I, I mean, everyone's been talking about it recently. And mm -hmm. I was like, instantly recoils like, oh, I don't want AI. I can't write content. And I thought... Oh, hang on you know is this because you're feeling threatened like mm -hmm. and so I thought, let's think about this. And like can AI replace good content writing can AI replace good copywriting and I thought about it and I thought I, I don't think it actually can because 
you can it can be used in one way so you you put your you know what you, your requirements in and it mm-hmm. throws out a well crafted you know well uh-huh. written something that reads well but is something that is kind of pretty or sounds good does that make good content or does that make good copy and in my mm-hmm. idea is no because the different there is a difference between something that sounds good and there's a difference between something that resonates and makes mm-hmm. you take action so it's a difference you know good copywriting and content writing is compelling and it converts which means it gets somebody to want to do something mm-hmm. it gets somebody to feel something it moves them yeah in, in some way right something that sounds good but it just you know it doesn't connect it is just more noise you know mm-hmm. and the thing that i've and this could obviously change but at the moment something that ai can't do it can give you the structure of something yes. it can maybe imitate some copywriting formulas but a good copywriter or content writer is adding in tone of voice and uh vernacular and nuance and it can kind of copy your tone of voice but it doesn't quite come across so you're gonna to have to go in and you're gonna to have to add that in and a good copywriter or content writer also has a really deep knowledge of their audience which is something that presumably your you know ai technology isn't going to know any better than you so you're gonna to have to add that in as well you know you have mm-hmm. to really understand what makes them tick you know make them feel like you are standing in their shoes and seeing the world through their eyes your ai can't do that so you have to go in and you have to add that in and then another thing that good content does is there has to be that element, you know, we want to be showing up as, as kind of leaders, we, as mm-hmm. thoughtful, as kind of yes. um, original. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so you're going to have to add that in. And, and actually, if we aren't, you know, one of the ways that I figure out how, where I stand on things is by writing about things and formulating mm-hmm. my ideas and putting it out there and seeing how it's received and thinking, mm, I'm going to speak my way of thinking you know, it's a thought process communication in many ways, and we evolve mm-hmm. through communicating. And so I think that's lost as well. And so when you think of all the things that you've got to add in, once you've got this template, you think, well, how useful is this? Because we already have copywriting formulas, mm-hmm. which you can learn, um, yep. and they're not that hard. And okay, I know it's not as easy as just chucking it into some software, but it's such a valuable skill. And mm-hmm. I think as an entrepreneur, whether you eventually want to be writing all your content or copy or not, you need to understand what makes good copy and content. Because otherwise, when you hire someone, when you're massive to do it for you, you can't recognize whether they're doing it well or not. Correct. And I think it's really important. So I, I hate, you know, obviously for some people, I would say, because for example, um, I know people who are dyslexic, so they struggle with that yes. word formulation. So having something like AI to kind of give you that base Mm -hmm. Uh, that could be amazing so I I don't want to completely poo-poo it I know but I think these things need to be used with discernment and caution and there are a few other things you know related to like copyright and plagiarism and um you know algorithms and SEO that there are question marks around as well with it Mm -hmm. so it's not a basket I want to put all my eggs in and I so I would use it with caution Ooh, I think we're in the same camp here. I'm I'm very much mm-hmm. along the same lines of I don't want to put all my eggs in that basket. I'll put in content I've already written and say, hey, I need a headline for this. And it will pull my own words out. And I've found that to be probably the most useful piece of that. Yeah, that's and that the headline generators, they've been around for a while, actually. Yep. And it is useful because sometimes you just can't come up with that that catchy thing and they have the thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. I, I just worry and I don't love necessarily the lack of that connection. And you have to do so much after work that I wonder if there's really a time gain. But like mm-hmm. you, when there are differently abled people who need that kind of technology and it makes their life manageable and be able to really run their business more effectively and efficiently, I say, go for it. Even if you don't need the technology, use it, just use it with caution. That's exactly just, how I feel. Just yeah. a caution tag around it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And just remembering that hu- human and real is always going to trump yes. everything that's automated because that is, as we, as you said at the very beginning, that is what people are searching for. Whether we are in real life or whether we are online, mm-hmm. that is what makes the world go around, isn't it? It's connection it and relationships. 
And I think we learned that through COVID that we had to have, we really craved that connection. And so we learned how to get better at that online. I think for the first time where we didn't have to, now we did. And so there's that expectation that we continue to connect authentically mm -hmm. online. Yeah, yeah, it's really important. And I think the game has upped, you're right, since mm -hmm. since then. And, and that's a good that's a good thing, you know, because um there had been a lot of kind of faceless, um, kind of hustly marketing that was based on um tactics rather than that real like attraction mag magnetizing people to mm -hmm. you and, and just serving. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's I think that's what Yeah. I and that's when they see through the other marketing now a lot more. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I'm curious, since we're talking so much about connection and really telling your stories, I know one of the things you enjoy doing is really building businesses and bringing people together in the work that you do, whether it is helping new authors get started with their books or other purposes. How are you fostering community right now that you're finding is really helping? Oh, it's so, it's so important. And one of the things I realized I do work one-to-one -one and privately, but the mm -hmm. thing that I have always loved from day dot um, has been little kind of like group work. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I used very early on in my business was, I think I had a Facebook group five years ago and uh, oh, I have a little bit of a love hate relationship, the whole free <laughs> Facebook thing um and actually I've just reopened another one just 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 for, for my book but I had actually hadn't had one for a while but so I started off with three Facebook groups and I loved having that like little community where people could connect connect with each other and we all had like a you know we, we had similar world views and approach and, and similar mm -hmm. interests and you know in the early days I really found that I got that from the free Facebook groups um but I think you know as the free Facebook groups proliferated. They, you know, people got their, their attention was a little bit more scattered. And then what happened in 2020 um, with everything that was going on in the world, I thought, and I had been very focused only on small programs and and one-to-one um, -one work. I started a membership. And um, so my membership, it, it was originally called Fearless Content and now it's called Create.ink because it's evolved a little bit, but it Ooh. has been around for ooh, three years now. And actually, that is such a lovely, I mean, it's a small but mighty little community. And we, um, you know, I have a, a library of content, obviously, which they can pull from. But what actually they love, you know, we have a private Facebook group for that. And, you know, it's not that busy, it's not that noisy. But what we do every single month is we all come together on a group call. And what I love is that those calls aren't me, you know, obviously, <laughs> I'm giving my feedback and, and teaching <laughs> but it's just that there's everyone has got started to get to know each other and create connections with each other everyone brings forward their ideas everyone celebrates each other's um wins and supports each other when they're going through a difficult time and I've you know some of them I know they've I mean they're from all over the world and um some of them have met up with each other, you know, traveled over the summer and met up for coffee. Um, and I actually met up with a lady who'd come over to the UK from Germany okay. um, last summer. Um, oh. And it's just, it's just lovely, the the mm -hmm. connections in the community. And, um, and so I realized actually that while I love that real progress that you can make and, and, and relationship you can build from one-to-one -one work, I love bringing people together and um fostering that sense of not aloneness because mm -hmm. um you know in online business so often we are solopreneurs we probably don't have a team we might have a VA um but most particularly in the early days yeah. you don't have a team and you've gone from perhaps working in an office where you're surrounded by people every day to mm -hmm. sitting in your uh your dining room or in your work home office and yeah so I, I love that so while you know they're learning and they've got similar interests that you know it's that creating that community um and I love that and so I'm doing more group programs now so my um I used to just do one-to-one -one book coaching but I've just started a, a group book coaching program now and I've got seven ladies going through that and I love how they're all kind of getting excited about each other's uh -huh. books and, and giving feedback and um sharing a, you know resource ideas and mm -hmm. yeah and I just think that yeah I love that's a really positive side of online business is mm -hmm. that uh, 
it brings people together who would never have met each other and yes. you know in real life so uh, you know you might not have people with that interest in your local town and then suddenly but you do in these little groups and spaces and mm. so that's been a real um it's a, been a real joy for me a real pleasure um doing that and, uh, and then there's also a sense of community in my email list as well I think that's another place it's another enclosed mm -hmm. space where you can be more intimate with people and I think that's yes. the key you create that community when you create that safe boundary space mm -hmm. where you can be a little bit more intimate and personal and yeah and, and nurture those relationships and I think I'd rather have these small small groups yes. where I can really get to know people than have <laughs> you know mm -hmm. I agree with you I think those small groups just allow so much more connection and when those moments happen that you need to celebrate you know even if it's just a teeny tiny little step you've taken everyone is excited for you because they know your journey and they know that this was a really big moment for you and they are going to celebrate it just like when something happens that doesn't go the way you wanted that big challenge pops up, they're going to first commiserate and then they're going to help you think about how to move forward so that you don't just sit and wallow with a tub of ice cream, yeah. right? They're going to help you move forward. And I think that's, that's what we miss so often is that connection, yeah. creating it. You're, you're so alone often because um, often you don't have a lot of people around you in your yeah. real life who are <laughs> entrepreneurs. It's a very specific way of being and you do fail and you do make mistakes and you know perhaps yes. you might the reaction from people in your life is are you sure you want to do this or you know maybe it's time to go back to the day job or give up or whatever whereas if you're surrounded by people who are doing it too they know it's just part of the process they know mm -hmm. that that's how you grow and and it's easier to pick yourself up when people are able to reflect that experience mm -hmm. back at you and, and it, yeah oh. it's motivating and inspiring and it's it's a it keeps you going for sure that it keeps you going on the days when you need someone else to pump you up or lift you up or just say, I'm going to hold your hand through this moment and you're going to keep going and it's going to be okay on the other side. Just I'll hold your hand. I'll be your strength for this moment right now. And I think we need that. We need it, especially you hit the nail on the head as entrepreneurs. We are often solopreneurs. We don't necessarily, especially in the early years, even have a VA necessarily, which means you are truly doing this in a vacuum yeah in a vacuum you're like this little island and then what these kind of little communities that you can join I mean it doesn't have to be online you nope. you could join you know I know a couple of um, business groups locally and I went to a Christmas party last um, December I was invited to and it's like real other entrepreneurs Ooh. in the room and it's such a great feeling actually just chatting to other people who kind of got me mm -hmm. um because we can be quite um unique um people you know when you tell people what you do you think, oh. I don't know that you that's not true not at all <laughs> oh my gosh we are unique it is different it's a different way of living it's a different way of thinking than that normal yeah. nine to five where you show up at the office you do your work and you go home and yeah, so yeah. often we find our work I don't know about you but my work kind of bleeds over past what would typically be my five o'clock and yeah. it sco scoots into those little nooks and crannies of the day yeah. because that's just the way business is yeah and it's also because you know you don't go into business unless you love what you do and yeah. so there becomes a blurred line between what is work and what is play and I think that's yeah, something you have to learn to be quite strict about as well because I definitely have burnt myself out in the past not uh -huh. giving my those boundaries um but yeah but that's the joy of doing something you love though isn't it it is it is Territory. Oh my gosh. So you have shared so many amazing little nuggets here today. You've reminded us that one size does not fit all, that you really need to customize your content to connect, to really resonate with people. And you can do that with the stories you tell. It doesn't have to be the stuff you want to keep private. There's plenty of other stories in your life that you can share. You can go back to childhood. You can let people in on the daily things that you're taking care of, even like cooking, like you said about Gabby Bernstein, that cooking show. Um, because really we have to make sure that we are still injecting who we are, not just letting technology take over. I'm a huge fan of tech, just like you are. I love technology, 
But there are those moments that make me go, ooh, this doesn't really sound like me and I need it to sound like me. Mm-hmm. So making sure that you're really putting some thought into that so that you do connect. And as you go into your communities, looking for a way to create relationships and that you can do that through the storytelling that you're doing, the writing, the emails, the blogs, the podcasts, the whatever it is you choose to do to connect. It's it's truly about the relationships at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you have your new book. We just talked a little bit about it. Um, at the very beginning, but tell me again, where can I get your book? Uh, at the moment, it is available on Amazon, so you can get it Kindle and print version as well. I yeah. am um, going to be setting up my own shop so you can buy direct as well. But for the moment, Amazon is a great place to grab it and, and it makes it easier. So wherever you are in the world, you should be able to get yourself a copy. Awesome. And so as we wrap up, I just wonder... You just have this book out, brand new. What is one thing you wish you knew about writing your own book when you started? What do you <laughs> wish you had known when you started your own book? Because I know you've been a content writer. You, you've you been a ghost writer, correct? Yeah, as well. So, right. so you, writing is not new to you, but writing your own book, I think is probably a different ball game. That, do you know, that was a problem for me because um, I've written for big magazines I've helped other people with their books Mm -hmm. and uh, but it's always been their story their message going out into the world it's their vulnerability you know so Mm -hmm. I slip in I find their voice Mm -hmm. I figure out what their story is and I share it for them there's no like fear coming up about what are people going to think of me or um gosh you know what are other experts in my field gonna what if they question me what if they disagree with me there was none of that coming up I just delivered it and did it when you write your own thing you are putting a little piece of you out into the world you are you are kind of stripping yourself bare in a sense like you know kind of look at me and it's quite terrifying and that is um something I, I did a little quite a lot of work on actually because I did struggle to let people in because I was um uh, very used to hiding behind other people mm-hmm. and uh, so it was quite hard to be me and find my voice and share my stories uh, um you know it's a process you know you can't force yourself it's a process um you have to do it when you're comfortable I wish I had forced myself to get my book out there sooner because I was mm. more than ready and more than capable. And yeah. and I think, i tell you what the other thing I had, it was this, because I am a you know professional writer, I've, been, I've written for some kind of big titles and mm-hmm. uh, had quite, you know, quite a, a good career, but I'd, I'd never written a book with my name on it. And there was this big fear of like, what if it's not good? What if yeah. it's rubbish? What if I get terrible reviews? And I've never really thought about that before because you're used to just, you know, putting stuff out there, but suddenly this was mine. And, um, but I wish I had actually realized that, you know, I don't have just one book in me. I have many books in me. And the best book I can write now, the best book you can write now is the book you need to write now. Stop waiting for it to be perfect. Stop waiting for you know something miraculous to happen and you have a bit more confidence or whatever just just do it now the, the best book the knowledge you have now the book that's in your heart right now that's the one you need to write right now and you know there are many opportunities you can write another one after that if you come up with a new idea or you feel differently you can change it that's the beauty of this online space you know I can go in and edit my kindle you know uh the content of my kindle mm-hmm. book at uh, any time you know so get it out there shared is better than you know tucked away in your brain or in your in your desk drawer share Mm -hmm. it with the world and then if you come up with something better and bigger brilliant you can share that next and after that so just get on and do it oh thank you Kate I don't think I can top that with anything I could possibly say um you're Mm -hmm. right just get your stuff out there just get going and from that action you can learn So get your book out there. If you have a book inside you, and I know you do, get your book out there and start moving forward. And in the meantime, while you're writing your book, I do want you to pick up Kate's book and I'll put the link in the show notes for you so that you can grab it 
And because it's on Amazon, it is shipping very quickly, which is beautiful, or you can get it on your Kindle right away and start reading today. So thank you, Kate, so much for your time. I appreciate you sitting down and chatting with me about your book process, but also about creating those stories. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.